I don't wanna da da da. La. I don't know if I get close, it's a little. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is that the standard mic test noise? Da da da. It helps. It's good. That's the professionals. That's Hell what they yeah. do. Uh, <laughs> on set at the thing I did for IGN for the last two weeks, because uh, you know I do do vocal warm ups, but when crew were around, I just kept going <laughs> <laughs> until uh, finally the moment I was fishing for happened where someone was like, Is that a vocal warm up? and I got to go, No, <laughs> <laughs> just oh, <laughs> what a troll. What, what a good what a bit. bit. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Took three days. <laughs> three days? Oh, bit. commitment. Love it. <laughs> it's the best. Uh, I miss being on set with you, buddy. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, you guys were there in full-size <laughs> cutout <laughs> form. <laughs> Not in spirit. <laughs> I like how you, like, stumbled over that where it was, like, in spirit. No. Fleshlights yeah. in your hands. No, <laughs> not spirit. Not, not spirit. spirit. Not spirit. It was this other, this <laughs> other disgusting other really thing. disgusting yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, let us uh, let's okay. do it. A sode. Cha. Fly me to the thing. <laughs> let me play among your cells. I'm yeah. out already. <laughs> uh, but we're talking the thing today on Frame Rate, the podcast where we rate frames. And I'm Michael Swain. And I'm Abe Epperson. And we have a third person here who you probably already heard because I don't think we should cut that opening Fine. segment. Uh, introduce yourself, Guestio. My name is a guest, and it's Cody Johnston. Hello. Uh, hello, Cody. Hi. Welcome Buddy. back. Did you, have you had any time to read Sam and Max Hit the Road yet? I've started it, yes. It is the like instantly delightful. Their dialogue right? and back and forth is so good. They're so flippant and, about everything around them. I love it. The quality of the illustration is just, it looks like it was so hard to draw. Yeah, I never, I, my, I mean, my only exposure really to Sam and Max was the game over and over and over again. So actually yeah. reading the thing is so fun. I'm glad. Uh, what I say we were talking the about? Thing. Oh yeah, the thing. The thing. And we, I want to flag, I want to flag two things. Uh, there already is an existing podcast within our broader podcast network. Uh, from Gamefully Unemployed on the thing. Who's the, Abe? Were you the guest? I was the on guest that? because I am. I'm the okay. thing guy. Everyone knows. Everyone who's everybody, anybody, yeah. knows that Abe Epperson is the thing guy. It's I you. love the thing. Mm -hmm. um, I stand the thing. It might be my favorite horror movie of all time. Really? Oh, oh I didn't yeah. even know it's that. Okay, big. so there there is a thing one and thing two. Excellent. And if Abe repeats any of mm -hmm. like reuses mm -hmm. cruxes mm -hmm. of any of his previous points. His small beans pay will mm -hmm, be deducted mm -hmm. since it's old Don't worry. material. Bleep it out. Co Bleep it all. Yeah. Cody can say whatever he wants. Yes. Time, unlimited use of time machine sound. It's whatever you want, man. It's your show. Hate the thing. <laughs> thing bad. Yeah. Uh, Abe, was this a special request uh, episode? I believe it was. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe with every mm -hmm. fiber so of my being. So we want to take was. this moment to thank Robot Crank. Robot crank. Mm. Uh, thank you for the pick Bro, the flick God, submission crank. and your, you know, thanks for your patronage. Hey, thanks, RC. Uh, we're gonna do we're gonna do more of the pick the flicks, but it's on hiatus right now while we get caught up. That's true. Um, Although after coming off White Snake, which again, good movie, love that Mind Freak five five five, but uh. Hey, it's like my prayers are answered because the thing is a movie we should have covered a long time ago already, and here it is. I think we only avoided it because uh, we try not to overlap too much with Game Fleet, but I'm sure they won't begrudge us talking about the thing mm. for a while. I can't imagine. Yeah. So, uh, just real quick, Abe said it was his one of his favorite horror movies. Cody, what's your pre-existing relationship with the thing? Hey, you had seen it already, right? We're talking the uh, original uh, thing. John yeah, Carpenter's yeah, yeah. The thing. I've, I've not seen the prequel. Um, yeah. Uh, I so I actually um, had never seen the thing uh, from start to finish. I had uh, absorbed it <laughs> like <laughs> via cultural osmosis, I guess. Yeah. Um, but I had never actually sat down and watched the right. thing. So you'd seen images, because, um, you know, images, gifts, scenes, and like I know, memes. I know, like all right, this this scene that mm -hmm. I know about. Um, but I had never actually mm. like I'm gonna sit down, mm. I'm gonna watch the movie. Delicious. I wish um, I was you. So that was. 
yeah, wonderful and delightful. And I don't actually sit down and watch movies these days. Um, so this was actually a great excuse to be like, no, sit down and watch a good movie. Don't look at anything mm-hmm. else but the screen for this. Mm-hmm. You're a Peloton guy mostly for your movies. Absolutely, right? absolutely, yeah. exactly. You gotta keep, you gotta, uh, you gotta keep, keep busy, you know. The moving. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I gotta keep good, that blood flowing. <laughs> it's a good triangulation because I feel like I'm uh, symbolically right between you. I've seen the thing like five or six times, and I think it's very good. But favorite horror? It's far from my favorite <laughs> horror movie. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, yeah, all valid opinions. Everyone's everyone's doing great today. <laughs> we're killing it yeah yeah it's good i i yeah i i mean i loved it i don't know if i would categorize it similarly but i'm also not like a huge horror movie guy so i don't have a a breadth of of knowledge in terms of like it's better than this movie it's um john carpenter's favorite horror movie or of his own Uh, of his own movies so escape from that all of his movies Mm. Yeah, yeah. From. we can name any of his uh, movies and he likes better the than thing Trouble better than China. yep that's yep, yep. Uh, all, of them. all of them uh i can see why it's very clean and iconic uh i'm torn between whether to ask cody his impressions as a fresh viewer or abe why it's his favorite we'll be running a twitter poll for the next 24 hours <laughs> Uh, Abe, why is it your favorite? I think that'll get us started with um, the right positive yeah. energy. Because the thing rules, we all I already mean, agree. I mean, it's not just that the concept slaps. That's one thing. It absolutely does. It does It's a really do cool, tight concept for a horror movie. The like, What I think is the crux of the Pitch horror me, is yeah. that it can come anywhere from any of us like it is all of us it the, it gives you the illusion of safety and stripping that away uh and realizing that you're not safe and anyone that you trust is no longer someone you can trust and they're out to get you is horrifying and that's a great concept on time well, that's it uh, there's many movies just for long time yeah. listeners i want to point out that abe has long brought up uh, horror the best horror movies that tend to last are the ones where they find a way to make the environment pervasively the danger mm-hmm. and like in aliens case yep. just if long time listeners can tie this shit together you know uh, in aliens case it's like it can be anywhere in Jaws's case it's like mm-hmm. it's better in this environment than you are and mm-hmm. in this case it's like it's in the people and right. all oh. interesting and twists formless. on the yeah. same thing which is the woods are dark and deadly you know yeah exactly yeah. Uh, the, uh, the, the not, horror mm-hmm. yeah the best horror is the, the unknown right uh yeah you, in a way yeah, and exactly. it's the unknown is, and the and power the of the unknown. monster right right and yeah and the idea that it's formless in a sense the idea that it's locked in here with us because of the like icy arctic uh antarctic conditions uh like it just is like a perfect little bottle episode you know um on top of everything on top of all that the reason there's a few movies that have this kind of these tropes going on have you know very cool concepts that are at play uh but when you look at this thing and i always have to look at things as a director this thing is efficient uh it runs and it uh, acknowledges like film grammar in such a unique way uh, one of the, my favorite aspects about it is that how he uses, how he frames everyone from the front. Uh, a lot of movies, a lot of horror movies like to creep around the back because then you like take place of the monster. He does a very mm-hmm. smart thing where all of his compound shots, meaning like a composition that moves across some faces to, a, a, you know, a group of two people on a couch to a third pe- person who's on isolation. He gives us the time and the speed to really think about, I bet that guy's the guy. And then you go, no, 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 it's that guy. And so you're, he's encouraging us to play this game where we find the horror ever, like in these scenes time and time again. It's a great point. Be- Quick cutting would ruin it that It would effect. ruin that effect. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it's, yeah. Uh, it's that yeah. tone and that speed is also hit by Ennio Mor- Morricone's, uh, like the reason it's so drone and like, Bum, bum. You know, it's like doing this very slow. It wants you to go slow so that the fast, when there is fast, like the dog scene, it's very mm. effective. 
But is it Ennio? I thought Carpenter always did his own scores. Am I thinking no? He, else? This is um, the studio didn't want him to do his own score for this one because they oh, threw more money at this than most. Uh, this has mm-hmm. an, uh, another interesting story about this is that it bombed like crazy and it almost ruined John wow. Carpenter's career. What? Yep, it was up for a Razzie Awards. There's no justice. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah, yeah. what? That's the craziest because I commercial flops can be for any myriad of reasons, but everyone in film saw this and thought this is the worst movie of the year. That's crazy. The entire uh, America didn't care for it. They thought it was too over the top and stuff. And then, um, uh, of course, it became a cult hit, and it's one of the more beloved films. Um, but yeah, he he almost he almost his career almost got ruined. He said basically as much that cause the film got $15 million and like mm-hmm. in 19, this is 1982 Friday the 13th in 1980 had a caught like, this is what horror was at the time in 1980 Friday the 13th costs 700 K Halloween, wow. which was 78 had less. It had like less than a half a million. So like, like yeah, 400 K. Yeah. So no one was putting millions of dollars into a horror movie. They just, it hadn't been tried before. Um, mm-hmm. and that's why it kind of bombed. Also in the I studio's think. mind that you're, they're like, you ruined this whole potential genre mm-hmm. of high budget horror. Movies. Right. And it's a little different from with a bomb. the studio, studio, uh, space. Like if you watch the original Howard Hawks film and it's also takes place in, in like an icy bunker, it's all based off the right. same short mm-hmm. story. Right. The same short story. Right. Yeah. yeah it's imagine. called who if, goes if there. Yeah. Doing it. I didn't know that either. Yeah. Oh. You learned so much on this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It was, it was written in like 80, 48 or something. It's an old, old thing. Yeah. And so when uh, Thing from Another World came out, it was like, that was 50 something. It was just, you know, it was a new story. Um, so we should add, because most of you know this, but then it ends with, the ending's really dope. <laughs> um, and I don't mean to jump to the end, but you just did like most of a nutshell. So uh, I should just point out, then they go into the tunnel, they fight the giant thing. Uh, they blow the whole place up and it's uh, only Childs and Kurt Russell, what's his name? McCready? McCready, McCready yeah. Left. Max. And uh, e- so we fade out on two people who, again, either could be the thing or they could both be human. Mm-hmm. <laughs> really uh, perfect finishes, ending for this, yeah. Finishes yeah. the thought in the perfect way. Yeah, you want, it really yeah, sticks the It encapsulates yeah. the movie, yeah. You, want, you, want that, you still want that feeling even when the movie ends. Mm-hmm. I want to hear what Cody's uh, initial reactions were because that's what I'm more interested in. Yeah, go on, newbie. Come on, virgin. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, heck. Oh, you know, I like that. It's good. It's good, man. I liked it. Um, I mean, you I, got, I... You got finger banged <laughs> last night. Tell us about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus it Christ. I liked it because it felt good. Um, I liked the movie because it felt good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it was, uh... Leonard Moulton says, I liked the movie because it felt good. good. Um, I, it was great. I loved it. Uh, it was engaging from the very beginning. Uh, it does a great job. And you know right away, like, well, don't trust that dog. Um, but also, <laughs> uh, there is that, uh, vis- that visceral, like that natural reaction when you see um, a dog being shot out. Like, don't shoot the dog. Leave right, the dog alone. Right. Um, they instantly mm-hmm. uh, create this tension of knowing that that's probably the thing and also don't shoot the thing that looks like the other thing that we love, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> which is the whole movie. Um, yeah. And like, Abe, like you were talking about the shots from uh, from the front, uh, which is uh, something I didn't even consider, but that's uh, exactly right because it's not, you're not, you're not looking behind your back waiting for like a monster. You're looking at each other. You're constantly mm-hmm. looking at each other. Mm-hmm. It's this sort of atomized, uh, isolated paranoia that's permeates throughout the entire thing. And it's uh, it was well, engaging so. through the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, taking away the trope of something suddenly enters the background of frame and draws your eye. That is one of the, that is like the number one bread and butter trope for horror oh, yeah. movies. So it's amazing to realize that he took that away from the, himself. It's not in this found movie. Yeah. It's do. not his yeah. trick and uh, you don't need it. Cause that's not what he's trying to do um, or what's, what is fearful about this. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, uh, I'm not going to, 
I won't tie it too much to what's going on these days, but <laughs> say, um, it could be called Twitter the movie in some ways. <laughs> well, yeah, like this. There's, I mean, there's a line um, when McCready is he's doing his uh, tape recording, and uh, I forget the exact wording, but it's like everybody, <laughs> nobody trusts each other, and we're exhausted. Everybody is tired. I think, mm-hmm. um, and like there it is. Yeah. Um, and there's something. It's it's interesting because you have this sort of like formless uh creature could be anybody could be anywhere like you said with alien uh but most movies you have this drive to uh come together and fight the th- the thing uh I, I non-capitalized thing um mm-hmm. and uh again sort of like um i'm gonna briefly draw it to what's going on these days just because i think about this aspect of uh quarantine a lot where uh in normal disasters, in normal crises, human beings have the impulse to work together to go to each other, come mm-hmm. together mm-hmm. and work together. Um, and in this situation that we're currently in, the thing to help people is to stay apart. It is a very unnatural uh, thing for humans to do right. um, in that situation. Uh, so there's this uh, tension between... Uh, wanting to defeat the thing, um, but not doing the natural thing that humans would do. So in Alien, you can, all right, the team is going to stick together. We're going to stick together. We're going to go and we're going to get the alien. But this is like, we're going to stick together by not trusting anyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And that is... doping each other with morphine, putting Brimley in the shack, tying Mm -hmm. each other down. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Turning each other into enemies, because that, I mean, that's part of uh, the whole, the thing's thing that it does. That's the terror of the thing. Yeah. And yet, I had a did you because watching it so first of all one of my main takeaways was uh annihilation owes more to the thing than i recognized before um like the tied down scene where one of them suddenly becomes a thing reminded me very much of the scare bear scene and uh you know it's a meteorite from outer space and it's just here and it's sort of you never understand its rules from its own perspective and that was what i found myself most fixated on this time like questions like and I don't even think there's an answer in the movie and unless you guys have strong inclinations. Uh, do you know when you're a thing? I th- It seemed like they it genuinely sometimes didn't know. Like Palmer seemed to not know he was a thing until he suddenly is like, oh, I guess I'm right, a right, thing. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, a lot um, of people have talked about that and there's no consensus mm-hmm. is what I've read about. If some people argue it's the thing being really smart, until they're like, ah, you, we got Acting. you. Um, yeah. Other people, think... it's like, no, it, 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 a part of being a perfect imitation is that like, you don't even put the impulse in your brain that you're the bad guy. So uh, I you like know. that. Right. I think there, it's a, there's, yeah. I like you look at the movie, uh, where they go down underneath and Blair is building a spaceship mm-hmm. <laughs> basically. Mm-hmm. Um, so that implies that, the thing he knows what he's doing yes to some extent but also i know like i've read some things talking about even the actors didn't know they would have these they would have these this exact Mm. conversation on set like wait so do i know that i'm the thing or do i just act like i don't know that i'm the thing Mm. and they wouldn't Mm. they they didn't really have an answer for that either Mm -hmm. um but it is scarier if you don't know it's scarier Uh, they made the right choice if they were doing like that sitcom acting where you can where you're broadcasting this is a lie line that would not be as scary right. for sure. There's just that one. I think the only indication of of that is the uh, the light in Palmer's eye, right? And they um, mm. in the blood scene, yeah, where there's like he's the one he with, doesn't get an eye light. He doesn't is get a yeah. There's yeah. no there's no uh, twinkle in his eye. Mm-hmm. Um, well, that's definitely what makes the dog creepy. Is that they took away its eye light and yeah. its eyes are just it's like so dilated yeah. black. That dog. Yeah. Kudos Great to that dog. dog. Yeah. Jed? Amazing yeah. acting from Jed. Very good Jed boy. Jed is very yeah. good boy. Jed is... That Jed. walk, One of the that most walk down the hallway. Yeah, where it doesn't uh, yeah. look at... Yeah. Think about it's got camera crew. It's got like dolly grips. Wild. All these things to look at. It could look right at camera and it chooses to look perfectly in the right spots. It, it looks in and the... Someone's, oh, so and it, in one shot, yes. It, like There had to be multiple trainers going like, now look at me. Now wait. Now wait. Now look over there. Look it's over there. A, and then another trainer goes, okay, come okay. here. Come 
Give now me a walk. Stop, yeah, stop. Exactly. Yeah. Good boy. It looks, in t- it looks in the other room before it goes into the other room. I know. It's so yeah. good. And then when they and then they told so Jed was the name of the dog, and then they were like, okay, and we're gonna put you in a coop. Now explode into a bunch of tentacles. Yeah. And it did. And, and it he did. said, I gotta he do what I gotta dogs. do, man. And he's like, got it. No problem. I'm a Didn't good boy. Miss Here a we go. Beat. Such a good boy. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but my other question about the thing is, uh, and the Annihilation connection made me think this, I, uh, the thing seems, like, does anyone else find the thing cute and empathize with the thing? (laughs) Because I feel like the thing is an E.T. or an Annihilation type creature, I think it just crash landed and it's scared and lost, and it happens, its environment for life happens to be living hosts, and it's just trying to, like phone home right i mean yeah i don't it has no like it's interesting to me that brimley's so obsessed with the idea that it's going to spread and take over what if it was just like let's say it killed everyone and it won and it was in a human host what if was would it just build the spaceship and then go home because that's not that evil that's like what one of our space commandos would do if it crash landed it would kill mm-hmm. all the aliens around yeah, it and yeah, then come home it would. that's what they would do yeah, yeah they would uh, kill yeah they would kill and the aliens would have their little story where they fight the alien that mm-hmm. crash landed that's right if it's a part of its uh, life cycle or it's something that's like a byproduct of our life cycle like it's much it could be very much akin to like you said a human getting dropped off on a planet working on a plane a spaceship and at in during that time accidentally giving everyone smallpox you know uh yeah, right they would not be able to determine if this was like you're doing this on purpose you're not doing it on purpose i just think that it's adds interesting to the that horror. Brimley assumes its motivation will be to get to a major That's population true. center and yeah. spread. And I'm like, I think it actually wanted to fly away from Earth. Yeah. That's why it was right. Blair is yeah. the actual spaceship. Yeah. Blair is immediately pessimistic. You know, he's immediately like, nope, yeah. it's going to uh, work. Well, it's all because of that. that really sophisticated computer program that he used. Right, right. Who That's defended my that? I love that scene. It's my favorite. I remember so in the Game Fully episode, the one thing I remember is one of you mooks defended <laughs> the computer program. I like, did. well, now it's not so all right, right. S- spool out your bullshit so we can pick it apart. <laughs> it's it's not that saying like it's one hundred percent. And Tom, I believe, <laughs> agreed with me. The computer, a computer, simple even back then, a simple programming of just like how I'm figuring out whether or not this is exponential growth or not. And it, basically, the computer is just saying yes. That's all he's doing. It's yeah, just in yeah, order yeah. to translate it to an audience that had no computer literacy really at that time. Uh, people had to be told like this circle represents dog, <laughs> you know, like so mm-hmm. it, it it made it seem very much uh, like it has all the problems that computer programs during this time had. You know, on film, you yeah, know. yeah. Like Last it, Starfighter. I could have, I could have done with more text, maybe, or even just Blair sure. doing like, doing a, an equation or something, and then like he's already written out uh, on the paper chances of total like population control or whatever, right. and then he does the thing, and then he writes one hundred percent or whatever the answer is. Yeah, right? sure. It should have um, just been a string of numbers, and he hit enter. Yep. But remember, <laughs> like at, at, in nineteen eighty, remember nerds like us were like. Nah, stop being a nerd, dude. Like right, right. they didn't. They, the audiences didn't want to see the numbers. They, they just wanted to see, like, so what's that mean? Uh, someone hasn't seen Lost. The audience loves the they numbers. They love the numbers. They love the and numbers. And computers. You got to put the numbers in the computer. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, Old-fashioned computer numbers. One actually other computer issue I had, um, and this is very small because I it it is effective in telling you everything you need about like the the. the the efficiency of character um, oh, is very Oh, I was going to bring this up. Okay, because at the beginning, and like it says everything you need to know, it's mm-hmm. very efficient, mm-hmm. I get it, but they are basically stranded there for a long time. Thank you, time. Cody. Thank Why you. Why would you break the computer that keeps you like going to play the game with the computer? It is wild that he just destroyed that computer at the very beginning. Because um, I do not support it. Down with that scene. Because he's like, 
cheating bitch. <laughs> He's like, the I know. Computer computer like, then restart the, restart the game. Get Blair to fix the cheating computer or whatever. No. Don't break your one toy. It's like you break, like you're like, oh, I'm stuck in the winter for three months playing my guitar, and you get mad that you messed up a chord and you break the guitar. Mm-hmm. I yeah. At the point that Kurt Russell pours uh, J and B into the computer when they're in Antarctica. Uh, I would feel like in a movie without an alien, that would be an inciting incident. You'd be like, "Oh, McCready's got the Arctic madness." Yes, exactly <laughs> right. I was like, "Whoa!" So, like, so the the plot of this movie is everyone's mad that he broke their their game Dude. computer. You broke yeah, the computer. He gets drunk McCready. and shoots someone in the leg, and it just becomes the lighthouse in Antarctica. Right, right. You're like, you're this movie, and like, turn on each other. Someone's like, "Hey, steam is down," and then all hell breaks loose. Yeah, yeah exactly. We could have been playing games this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Another thing that uh, changes everything, or at least about Act 2 and 3, when do you guys think an Abe follow-up, do people discuss this online, when did Wilfred Brimley turn? At what point did he turn? That's the be- Is that indeterminate? People, uh, that changes so <clears throat> much. People bring up the shack. Yeah. It got in the shack somehow, opened the shack, let himself in by, via whoever. I don't know if that would have been... Uh, it wouldn't have been the only ones that we don't, the only ones we know are Childs, McCready, Nalls. And at the end, we don't even know about Childs because Childs right, disappears. That, yeah. But up to the point that Childs is good, we, we basically have the test. And then after the, and we don't know anything after the test. So everything's other than I think, um, uh, Gary's death, which is the, the hand in the face from Blair. Um, right. like we don't see a lot of the deaths, even Nalls just disappears. Right. Like we have no idea what underground, I mean, we he just like bounces. Nulls, but... Yeah. And so there's a lot of time that the imitation. Wait, kinda... he does. What's the last we see of him? Does he just run off frame? He, and that's he, the he end of really down a hallway and, to look yeah, for it. And direction. then the big, uh, Blair thing appears. Yeah. Which is like also that point. And I, uh, I, you know, whatever's movie, uh, but cause there is the, okay, let's stay apart from each other. We're all like, who knows who's who. After the test, that's like, no, we stay together at this point. Yeah, because now um, I, we can tell, yeah. That's right. a good point. They don't really pursue they that line of thinking. They don't pursue that type of thinking. <laughs> and that, you know, every movie, Which, like, that's at, true. at that point, that like, they've true. been, yeah, they've been paranoid for, for mm-hmm. who knows how long. So at that point, like, their trust is completely broken even after the test. So it kind of makes sense. Um, mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I could use for yeah a little more like wait we can we can finally stick together we've been wanting to stick together this whole right. time. The other thing about Blair is that Blair's not in the tests because Blair is in the shack. So right. I think the if you were gonna follow it would probably be Palmer because Palmer is Who the thing. Blair. Yeah, that makes the most sense. So Palmer turned um, Blair before Palmer thing died. So yeah. then and then when they return Blair to Blair, Blair's begging- escaped. So when Blair was smashing the computers, he was Blair. Mm-hmm. I feel like, yeah, and there was a, it, at a point in the shack. Yes. Like maybe after, like either before or right after he was begging to be let out. You got the noose what down I, there. And he's like, come on, guys, sense. get me out. I love a situation with no good options for horror. Because it's like, if he is human, it's tragic. And if he is the thing, it's creepy. Yeah. <laughs> when yeah. he was begging to get out. Yeah. Uh, Abe, was that you slipping into Brimley voice or Cody? That was Cody, I think. <laughs> oh, okay. Unintentional, but, sh- but I love him. <laughs> but I have to yeah. sidebar R. just for a second uh, to encourage Abe to plug, because people who have dreams <laughs> on PS4 can check it out whenever oh, they want. Oh, yes. I'm going to plug that. Um, and then can you speak for a very little bit, because most people don't listen to our podcast for this shit, <laughs> but uh, about the game you made, and I didn't realize how much it's clearly based on the thing. Oh, yeah, it is. It's entirely. Yeah, what's the name of the oh, dreams wow. game you and Dave made? Uh, Amazing. The Amazing name of the game is to the like, left oh of Destiny. <laughs> To the left of destiny, you know, just a little mm-hmm. bit to the left of destiny, uh, and it's it's nonsense. I don't know why I'm talking about this. Me and Dave Bell made a uh, on dreams. If you go, it's a PS4 uh, you thing that you can make video games in, and they're very good. Uh, we're not very good, but we made a very <laughs> horrible. Uh, so uh, I guess comedy, funny video game um, that is based on the thing. With Wilfred Bramley constantly behind yeah, the door but it's, going like, I'm fine, let me out, it's fine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's so good. 
I didn't even make that connection. Um, you didn't? Is that Me well? No, because yeah. I had not really he's, seen the thing. He's, he's called Mister Brimley. Would it made it? Oh clear? no, I knew. I knew. It was, I knew it was Wilford Brimley. <laughs> you just um, didn't know. It was the, but like, <laughs> yeah. it's like the thing. I didn't like that. Didn't uh, really. Yeah, yeah. Say. yeah I didn't like, watch the movie. Yeah, yeah, it's a bunker, and it's in the ice. It ends in an Arctic. Cavern. It ends in, in the an ice. Arctic it's cavern. Amazing. Yeah. Well then, don't call it to the left of destiny. Anyway, back to the movie. <laughs> I think it's a good name. I think it's a really good name. <laughs> So then why did, if he was digging a tunnel to f- make a spaceship, why open the door to the shack? Why was the shack door left open? Because, uh, he, I mean, he, yeah, he could have... The door wasn't open. Was I don't it? think the door was open. I think he... They went... Gra- they went he oh, it was. I made a big old note. When, he, when they come to the shack to check on him, Blair, the last time and find the tunnel, the door is standing open. And oh, I was just like, that is right. He... That is right. Um... Unless it's from Palmer opening, the I thought door it was to turn Palmer him. turning him, and then uh, leaving in a hurry because maybe everyone, because there was like mm-hmm. a call for, like I don't, Palmer you have to, him or you just assume their scenes were not point. seen. You know, like that's just the only way they deal with this, and which means that they could have um, operated exactly how it was. We don't know why the doors open or closed. At some point, someone opened a door. Um, mm-hmm. Also, could have been because he wasn't. He didn't escape. Like he didn't. He wasn't able to dig down dig, and wasn't. escape that way. He so. dug down mm-hmm. and like made the ship there. Yeah. So at one point, Blair has to cut the generator. Right. He has to cut the power. Yeah. So he probably just left, open the door, um, mm-hmm. to go cut the power. Yeah. I think that was really, like, so around the same time. When they're down in the tunnels and they say the generator's just gone, gone. That's because he blew it, right? Yeah, he'd like. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. I guess my question is why there are massive stockpiles of explosive barrels in tunnels under the lab. Oh, or that's, if that's for a common mining. practice in Antarctic yeah, labs. Yeah, the, the reason that there's so much dynamite and kerosene around all the time is that mm-hmm. that's how you dig into the ice to get to the really deep. You know. Oh, and they're digging down ice to get cores, core samples, core samples et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. So they have to and like, blow yeah, the path path. like yeah, you're in, yeah. Because they want to get But I did yeah. love how it was kind of annihilation y again, like you descend into this like close underground space where mm-hmm. the thing finally is. Mm-hmm. It's interesting because Annihilation also like thematically the re- the reason they seem similar, even though they're not, because I would say Annihilation is about uh, the self propensity of humans to want to kill something that works within themselves like we have a death wish and it's even in our dna it's called mutation and Mm -hmm. cancer this is about the this is xenophobic but uh in that like there's a other thing that's trying to manipulate you into becoming a bad thing um but they both have the same like similar uh like horror like motivation which is fear of self or fear of other but other as someone that you're willing to trust like fear of the group or fear of um like the thing that you hold is like um sacrosanct you know the, or yourself becoming someone yeah, you don't recognize anymore the feeling of yeah. powerless within the group yeah. it definitely tracks to like getting radicalized on twitter it's interesting <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, it's that iso- that isolation and paranoia. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. I didn't think about uh, how much the isolation stuff uh, would. There's all so many movies that are hitting different right now as people are doing their own, you know. Oh yeah, exactly. And watch yeah. through. The there's a uh, really good. It might be Heinlein, but I'm pretty sure it's Bradbury. Short story where. Uh, it's, it's kind of like this, but it's in the future and they're stranded on a planet and there's like five different factions and you keep going back and forth between them and all their like epic machinations to bring each other down. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the twist at the end is that there's only one faction and it was a, a ship trans pit, like tra- like uh, transporting delusional schizophrenic people that crash land and there's only like five guys down there and they're all crazy. There's... A lot of really good sci-fi short stories that remind me of this. I have yet to read the short story, so I should do That's that. True. But yeah, you, you, um, when I met Michael Swaim and he put me on a steady diet of Harlan Ellison, it reminds me of these kinds of stuff. This kind of stuff because it really, it really does clue you into what is the horror of this particular premise. Mm-hmm. And I think that this—that's what I think we react and why this is a cult following—is that the premise is true, 
uh, about how like the pre- or the movie is really good at like mining the horror of the premise. So. Yeah, and it's very it's very hard sci-fi and classic sci-fi in a lot of ways, especially like even the fact that the cast is an ensemble of almost interchangeable, which is annihilationy again, although they get a little bit more personality in that uh, of scientists. Like it reminded me the most of Solaris when he says, "We're not getting out of here," but neither is that thing. It was handled equally. I'm thinking of the right movie, right? Solaris. It handled with an equally like they're a group of dedicated scientists. If they have to die for the mission, Mm -hmm. they will die for the mission where they'll be like, but my daughter, I wanted to touch touch her provocatively with animal crackers. Mm -hmm. Sunshine. Sunshine. Sorry. That's right. Yeah. Which is another Alex Garland vehicle. Yeah. 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 That's the one I meant. Solaris is something. Is that a Clooney movie? Solaris is uh, an old Tarkovsky and they remade it with George Clooney. Mm hmm. That's also really good. Well, this isn't about that. So I also <laughs> wanted to ask you guys about the ending specifically. Do you have anything like, do you lean towards chat? One of them is infected. No one is. What do you think the deal is there? Yes. And Ooh. yes, is my opinion. <laughs> Generally, um, I mean, bunch it, of one, of, one of them has to be the thing. I think um, uh, you don't think they could have won. <clears throat> I, it's possible they could have won, um, but I'm I, I I lean heavily towards at, at least one of one of them is the thing. Um, I also lean heavily towards Childs, partly because of some clothing stuff and some of the shots uh, later on after the test, mm-hmm. um, and mm-hmm. some of the logic behind mm-hmm. their moves uh, sort of indicate that to me. Um, and the laugh also, I think, uh, I it, to me, the um, the bottle was a bit of a test that the thing failed. Wait, um, explain. I don't remember the part you're talking about. Um, well, because they're in the... Uh, they're there, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, they... Each of them says out loud, like, we don't... <laughs> one of us might be the know. thing. They yeah. know They know that they don't know. Um, uh, McCready uh, passes Childs the bottle um, to take a drink, and Childs, without a second thought, takes the drink. Um, they know that that's how you spread the thing to each other. They talk about it's how they have to eat cells. separate meals. They need to eat from cans separately. Oh, Otherwise, I thought they, they were doing that out other. of an overabundance of precaution. You think the thing spreads like a... I thought it had to tentacle you to get to turn you. No? <clears throat> I think I think I, there's something about food particularly because it's like it's made of... There's tissue. Yeah, you know? I don't, yeah, I don't it know could if it's like, a bit or something of itself. like that. It might not be an exact science. I think who says it's Fuchs, I think, brings it up. So it might not be yeah. even like a true thing. Like the thing doesn't work like that. We don't That's... know. But it's a warning that mm-hmm. in this yeah. paranoid world, uh, they, they take very, very, it. very seriously. And I find it hard to believe that yeah. Childs would be like, all right, this guy I think might be the thing is handing me a bottle. I'm going to drink it. Um, yeah, and then, and then McCready times. laughs. Um, mm-hmm. That's what that's one of the things that uh, sort of indicated that to me. But there's a few times this movie kind of um, makes kind of light of its own. Like this is the one discredit I would say is that in the way that they made it, because they kind of made it kind of flying by the seat of their pants, even conceptually. Uh, you know, there's stuff like the famous example being, and I brought this up on the gameplay one as well but it's really it bears repeating i'm a doc really really smart uh motivation for a sequence is when the dog that at the conclusion of that dog walking through like that we liked all so much he walks into a room and we see a shadowy figure right and uh we he because john carpenter knew that people would be able to watch this on a home video and such he didn't want anyone to be able to like see oh wait that kind of looks like child mm, right so that kind of looks yeah, like exactly. Nulls. uh so he just cast a different uh, it was a stunt guy just got a stunt guy to you're just a human in that. a jacket yeah so he's purposely made it so that it was unintentional and i think there's a lot of stuff where carpenter probably wasn't doing like what was the uh logically cohesive thing to do but was just doing decisions like uh sometimes i 
sometimes I go left, sometimes I go right, and it's random which I'm going to go, because then that way I don't even know. Right, um, right. Well, there's also the introduction I, of, yeah, the clothing rips or whatever, and then, the but then that, rips. that turns out to not be true for McCready, because When they, they're they, testing the feel. blood, they're y'all using the same knife. Yeah, that was one thing that got me in that scene. I was like, so come on, that's, guys, what are you that, doing? That would be, <laughs> that's true. you know. It's also the, yeah, you're literally sticking his blood in your blood. <laughs> you know, like, I think at one point, exactly. like, Nalls, like, wipes it on his pants. I'm like, that's not enough buddy what are you doing that's not enough i think that's, that's the not. weakest point of the mo- of the whole movie for me mm-hmm. is that he intuits what if the thing what if every cell is like an animal give me a wire like right, that's right, quite right, right. a <laughs> series of leaps to a thing that immediately works well, he saw the blood he saw the blood react so he, it isn't weird for him to think that it's just weird for him to think it sometimes and ignore it other times in my opinion Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's some inconsistency because there, yeah. he does see how the blood reacts to the fire, and he he notices that, and we get a shot of that, and because of that, it's like okay, so it's like its own organism, it, like the blood drifted back to the organism. So there's some interplay of how we think of blood. Their blood is different, very different. It might be individual cells. They it might be a like a group of cells that are yeah. right that are connected independent even, yeah, of each other not. you yeah. know in looper when they had i think bruce willis say the line don't worry about it it doesn't matter about time yeah, travel, time travel mm-hmm. yeah. um i felt like this movie had a better version of that which was kurt russell saying or he's like but why how could that be true and he's like Cause it's different than us. Cause it's from outer space. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, that's yeah. all you need to know. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I don't know. Yeah, he. Has uh, what do you want from me? An alien. He yeah. says, "What do you want from me?" I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's <laughs> which what, is like that's the screenwriter. Like, well, the screenwriter at three in the morning. Look, what do you want from me? It's from outer space. <laughs> Well, that's all because that's so also like that's the most Kurt honest Russell. and true answer too. like the time travel thing was more seemed like more of a lampshade. But that's actually like, I yeah. don't know. It's an alien. It it did the thing. We all saw it do the thing that we saw it do. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I fly helicopters. Yeah. Oh, a side I'm note. Not... When I watch this, I had the subtitles on because my air conditioner is very loud and I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Anytime they said the word the thing, not not like the thing. Anytime they mm-hmm. said the word thing, it was capitalized. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so oh, they'd be yeah, saying, like, oh, like that thing over there. Place. And it would just be, like, referencing not the, the thing. thing, but an object. But it would be Ba-ba. capitalized. It was very, very silly. Someone just did That's a find and replace. Yeah. Yep, yep. My question is, if, if the thing had landed in a lab not in Antarctica, where there are actual, where there's a biosphere... Mm-hmm. Okay, so, like, if the blood... If you can be the thing on a blood level, cellular level... Can the thing infect bacteria? Can I think they could, say living organisms yeah. in it. I don't know why they know that. Right, but right. They know it works on dogs. If it landed um, in like the jungle, could it infect a swarm of tsetse flies and then be like instantly be like, well, now I got a million things. I we're flying don't things. see why not. Yeah, like, probably. In other words, we're the luckiest pe- we're, we're very the lucky planet. Right. Yeah. We. It's like getting shot in the fleshy part of the shoulder or something where you're like, we're lucky it yeah. landed there. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah, exactly. the matte paintings of the ship sucked. I wish after seeing the matte paintings of the uh, crashed ship, I wish they just didn't explain the ship or go to the ship. There's something about like they see the tapes and then they go out there and they realize the Norwegian oh my God, it's settlement. Big. Yeah. And then they see the block, the chunk, the missing chunk of ice where they pulled the pilot from. And I kind of like that because it was like, oh, it, you're it's not just like a thing randomly came and landed on and then killed everybody. Uh, you it, know, yeah, they the, dug it out from been, who knows how we long ago. caused yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That, uh, to me, that adds a little aspect of the story. That also, seeing the aftermath, just, like the, uh, you know, that person, the frozen person with their, their throat open and stuff, like seeing, like, here's, wh- right, here's what Jesus. we are headed towards. Um, because like, like yeah. you mentioned, like, yeah, they're all scientists. They know what they have to do if it comes to it. Um, right. So I think that yeah. was, that like was very cool totally to see. Took, cut his own throat and yep. wrists. Did he cut his throat the, too? Yeah, I yeah. It's a real, so. how do you cut real, gruesome, throat? real gruesome shot. Uh, Hold on, give I me a second. Know. With, uh, <laughs> okay, with a, a lot of commitment. Uh. Um, <laughs> mm. That's what the, that band, the commitments. That's mm-hmm, all they say. Mm, that's about. what it was about. Uh, that, the yeah. band was about the, the movie, the thing. 
<laughs> not slitting your own throat. Good way to step it back. Uh, what I loved about that is structurally, that is the scene where you stop at the gas station before you get to the cabin in the woods, and the guy yep. says, "But." 40 yeah. teams Don't go there. All, <laughs> right, right. all died in a sex all explosion died. 30 years yeah. ago. Um, all that's left is this. But yeah. it was <laughs> just points at a stain <laughs> on his jeans. Right. Um, all, but it was the show don't tell <laughs> version of that. You just mm-hmm. walk around looking at this is what's going to happen to you. Yep. Yeah. It's the, I love uh, that. It's, yeah, it was very, very cool. It's also the same set. Um, they shot it after oh. they shot it after they had finished like all the explosion stuff, like the final bits were shot, and then they went back and filmed that. It's the same station, which is a really smart way for as a producer to shoot. Exactly, that. Yeah. like, well, we're gonna build this like basically a bunker and blow it up, and we want to have earlier in the film a blown up bunker <laughs> how do you shoot that well let's not make two bunkers and blow them up just let's cover just it with fake one. ice at the end yeah yeah just put ice on by the it, way yeah. was it fake ice was this shot where was this shot was it really cold where they I shot it i believe it was it, extremely I cold feel, uh exteriors were shot i can't remember exactly where but somewhere very cold yeah. um interiors like were may- cold maybe yeah. even norway i don't know so but it was real know. is the point yes yeah. Yeah, yeah the interiors it was not shot on location entirely though mm-hmm. the interiors were shot in a la st- sound stage that they uh had uh, air condition control and brought it down to 40 degrees for every yeah, yeah, yeah. They, built, they built the set and made it unbearable <laughs> yep could you imagine cody if during starship icarus we we're like we developed a technology so that you don't have to wear these horrible latex eyes. So we're going to shove these things in your eyes <laughs> so that the performance Just will so stay. Just so you know, yeah, we want consistent. To, we want you to be committed. <laughs> God. I don't I guess if you're wearing a giant parka and shit, you would want the AC cranked way up on even on a sound stage, but I'm still I would still be annoyed if I fa- if I was like, finally, we're flying to L.A. And they're like, yeah, we bought eight heavy-duty jetliner air conditioners. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, God yeah, damn it. Yeah. God <laughs> damn it. But yeah, like all the uh, exteriors were like, this is, this is, it is snowing right now. We are in a snowstorm. It is unpleasant. Yeah. Oh, also at the end, if neither of them are the thing, they're still both going to die, right? Most likely. Oh, like because almost definitely, yeah. Because the when the fires die down, it becomes negative 100, he said, or something? Yeah. Or like, was the implication that the fires could burn long enough for the spring crew to arrive? I think that they... I mean, they pretty mm. much resigned to death, right? Like, they knew... Even when they were, set, even they were yeah. setting the explosions beforehand, before they all went off, they were like, yeah, we're, it, it, we're, we're gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> like, we need, to, we need to make sure we kill it before we die. Right. Once you see... Like, basically... You have to ask yourself, what's your, what's the moment that you see? It's somewhere between head spider <laughs> and dog tentacles. Somewhere, especially when the dog tentacles grow two super long arms and are and it's going up into the ceiling. That's when you go. So this thing can't get out, <laughs> right? Like this cannot get yeah. to popu- the population. Like I have to be where the buck stops, and I will take. I will blow I myself guess, up with dynamite because it. Well, it's just interesting, you know, maybe it implies that it, at some point in its journey before it was the dog, it absorbed a spider. So it tries to map the human flesh onto a spider form. But it's like, uh, yeah, like why specifically mutate to look like what we consider a spider is interesting to think about. Yeah. And I also just wonder, like, think about panic instinct and self-defense. It's just funny to me that it could totally be true that this alien race that has mastery by the way do we see what it looks like when it before it morphed you know what i mean Uh, like when it was frozen in the ice we don't Mm. if you want to there's a um i don't know how much of a blessing it has from like the john carpenter version but i think it's not too bad Mm -hmm. um the 2011 version does have a version of like oh so this is what it like the seats would look like so oh. this is the oh, this is like okay. the craft. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing about that is you, in this movie, uh, it's a line from McCready who says specifically at one point, 
it ha- it has probably gotten a million other species and a million other planets and earth is just now the next one on its right. way. Right. So what's coming out of it? It's like it's gene pool is just like a, it, a it's library. called the chameleon. Yeah, it's a, soupy, it's soupy a library. library yeah. So when it's pulling out like a, what we know as a spider, that could be a very sentient intelligent race that it destroyed a million years ago and it's just a part of its DNA repository now. Or um or it got an, well, a spider all, on its yeah, way They have control Antarctica. of flesh at the cellular level. Maybe he was right. an emissary sent to teach us how to cure cancer, and his ship mm-hmm. crapped out, and he crashed, and when he woke up, we were like, kill that thing! And ever since, he's been like, fuck this species, I gotta get out of here. Totally Right, one well, for all, totally for all we know, there's a prequel to the prequel that is in the spaceship, mm-hmm. And there's another species in that that's their spaceship and that's what their seat looks like because they're that species. And then the thing comes Thank onto the God ship. on that ship. So like the thing yeah. takes over the ship that ends totally. up crashing. Like we have no like idea. Like trouble with tribbles, but with the thing. Yeah. Right, right. So yeah, even, even exactly. the shape of the, the seat doesn't really indicate what the thing I, could look like. I got to be honest, maybe because it's more mysterious, but I'm already more interested in the ancestral history of the thing alien than the aliens aliens like more than prometheus and whatnot mm. I'm like this is very interesting yeah how many well, like how yeah 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 how far can we Which go with thing prequels because... that i would be like yeah i would see that <laughs> right <laughs> so often do we say when something's doing a good job you don't need to know about the lore but if something's doing an excellent job Sometimes you just want to live in that world. I mm-hmm. think they're at cross, not necessarily at cross purposes, but it seems like it's a logic that's, it's something we do all the time on this podcast. People do it all the time on other podcasts. It's like how we imbibe movies is like, I don't want to, why are you focusing on this nonsensical like lore? I don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. And then the next second I'm like, I, cause I agree with you. I really do want to know, like, what is the tale of this species? Cause that's probably super dope and riddled with like horrible t- events. Yes. Right. Yeah. And the, the you know, idea like, of the genocide thing is it's pretty universal in like why it's effective and creates fear. So to put it in any other situation, it's not even like lore necessarily. It's just like, yeah, do another thing in another place. Just and it happens to yeah, be in this long line of the thing yeah. going from planet to planet to ship to ship to all these places. I'm surprised we haven't had like a uh, shape like this is the closest thing that get this is the closest version of it. Um, a shapeshifter monster that is like has its own like kind of franchise kind of thing. Right. Because it's very effective. Yeah. They did you a know, billion like, xenomorphs are really cool. <clears throat> for XYZ, but Why not a billion things? Yeah, yeah, I'd rather watch Did a billion it? things than a billion Halloweens. Do you know if the prequel flopped as well, Abe? The more recent thing? I think it did, yeah. What? You guys are fucking cowards. Go yeah. buy the thing merchandise and watch the thing. Well, I think also <laughs> one of the one of the problems I think with that and I haven't I haven't seen the new one, but apparently they um they in the middle of production or maybe post production, they changed all of the practical effects to digital effects. Mm. Yeah, um, that's which the is like one, one of the things you don't do for the thing. <laughs> no, the whole point of the thing was that it was like that's why it's a cult movie, right? I think. I mean, it's otherwise yeah. it would have just been forgotten by like just like any other like very cool concept. But, oh, like, how cool would it have been movies. to be on that set just to be in the presence of those sculptures and like yeah, look exactly. at the, the puppeteers working them and be like, holy yeah. shit, that thing's crazy yeah, looking. Yeah. You guys crushed it. <laughs> Instead uh, of like a guy Carp- with a bunch of dots on a suit and being like, oh, <laughs> yeah. hey, trust me, it's going to be really spooky. Uh, a dog in a green leotard. <laughs> God, God, yeah. Uh, going, ah! <laughs> uh, There's a, uh, an- something else that, I- speaking about like the body horror element, uh, the only person who wasn't overwhelmed by the disgustingness of the autopsy sequence was Wilfred Brimley. He was, mm-hmm. it was real animal parts. Well, he's a, like, he's a real, he's like, oh, a, the a organs in yeah. the puppet. Like yeah, they filled a puppet real. with organs. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because, you know, uh, it's easier. Carp- it's right, right, right. Yeah. Very effective. But it's totally Very the effective. right choice. <laughs> Yeah, and apparently he had no problem just putting his hands in there and get get going to work like a well, doctor. That, yeah, he does, he does that. He's like 
uh, he like cuts open like animals and stuff. Wasn't he like a, he's like a frontierman. <laughs> was he, does he? I was <laughs> going to say, I, I, I think that's what he was portrayed as. I can I see Wilford is, Brimley elbow was. deep in a horse easily. He seems at yeah. home there. Yeah. It seemed he did seem at home. Is Wilford yeah. Brimley just... <laughs> a civil warrior, a horse doctor? I think he might he be. Was. I think yeah. he was. Yeah. <laughs> Still uh, is man. He's one... good on Twitter. He, uh, yeah. yeah, he's uh, just a what a joy he what is in that. Um, he okay, just yeah, scans he, he was, for his name and then types. No, I'm Will. For he Brown. was he was a <laughs> uh, he was a ranch hand. Okay, so okay. he's birthed then to that makes sense. Yeah, so he's yeah. like, he, like he's like, oh yeah, get those organs in there. I'll grab them out. <laughs> uh, also, yeah. I love because that scene they cut it open, knowing that those are real organs. Everyone like the smell. They do that. Like there's the whole mm, there's yeah. like shots of like panning over them just being disgusted by the smell. Which yeah, oh, yeah that's not acting. Yeah, and I love uh, when Brimley's like, oh god. Oh God! <laughs> like he's just like as he's looking into like the most horrifying thing, which is like a half-formed dog baby inside the husk of an alienoid bigger dog. It's like, oh my God, this is the worst. The final form was very reminiscent of The Last of Us Two final boss, mm-hmm. like uh, five zombies crammed together plus a couple dogs right, right, in just there like for good measure. Just like throw some, yeah, just. Like, just toss them on like whatever toppings. you can get in there just cram them in Quato from uh total recall coming out of your back <laughs> anything yeah anything yeah. that sticks what else we got we could, can we get some uh can we get some star wars creatures yeah, in here put, toss a brimley on there we got it it's a good <laughs> yeah this man a, yeah. r.i.p brimley yeah is he i thought he was alive yeah, he just this died year. oh just died just recently died. I, i'm finding Maybe. that out now so forgive my yeah. previous comments like a month ago taste. No, no, no. It's, um, yeah. Well, I said he is good by. on Twitter, but I guess was. Yeah. R.I.P. Um, yeah. Then this is wow, yeah. in uh, honor of Sir Wilfred Brimley. Just a month ago. Wow, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. I wanted they, to talk, uh, get Abe's take, unless, Abe, you had something better. Sounded mm, like. Mm? You can ask questions. We, I want Cody to speak more. I love talking Well, Cody, Cody can talk, too, but I know you... Uh, you know notice. me too. All right, go ahead. I know, I know you <laughs> notice color play more. Uh, mm. And I just thought it was so cool to have the movie set in Antarctica, which even more than like The Revenant, because everything's dotted with trees, it's mm. just a blank white, essentially light bounce. And they were so restrained with like, inside this movie is like green and brown and white and black and outside it's white and black and navy blue and red and it Mm -hmm. was so fucking cool how they used different lighting effects to uh change the look of the snow yeah i mean i don't know what else you can say besides yeah it was i don't know what else you can say like the the palette is very controlled like in most movies uh people are very good at it carpenter doesn't skip a beat in my opinion you know like he he nails it, and you're right about those color choices. Those are exactly the palettes. Oh, it's and, funny because mm-hmm, go ahead. Well, it's just literally I was looking at a shot uh, because I have it on like my monitor, my other monitor as we're recording this. And as you were talking about the inside, it was a shot of Blair, who's like, "If anyone comes in here, I'll kill you." You know, mm-hmm. like, it, and the as you were saying it, it's like he has brown pants, he has green suspenders. Uh, everything is yeah. gray and white yeah, all behind the tan him. Stuff and, and, yeah, yeah, very earthy. It's earthy like tones. it's very earthy tones, but it is a it's a bunker space. So, you so toss there's some shadows also, on there. Yeah, there's some darkness. <laughs> right. Yeah, involved in every shot uh, in terms of like how the light falls off because everything was lit kind of practically with these overhead lamps um, that just kind of spotlight things instead of like giving an ambient fill, and then vice versa in day and night scenes in the exterior you can't really add shadows if they're not there, you know, mm. it's, you're fighting right, the sun right. and this, yeah. like you said, big bounce board that just throws light, scatters light everywhere. And adds to that, uh, um, that claustrophobia inside. And then like, just like exactly. the difference of being inside and you're stuck there and you're stuck with people that you can't trust, but then you go outside and you're like, Oh, there's nobody else. It is expansive Dude, yeah. and vast. It's the, like, we are, mm-hmm. we are the only ones here. It really highlights that, that isolation and in two different ways. It's very, very cool. Right. 
Yeah, because it's trying to say you can't. It can't get out because then it's there's no restriction. Right. Outside. Do you ever there's see them here. outside? And it's good weather, and it's sunny, and it's daytime. Yeah, just the, the very beginning, 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 I think. Right. Okay. Uh, right before the storm, like, like, like we have six days or like six hours till yeah. the storm. The beginning, the first half of the film, almost all the shots, except for the nighttime shots, they're all exterior and bright. Um, like when they're descending into the uh, cavern that has the uh, or like the, um, the alien ship, the, the crater of the ship. They're mm-hmm. scaling down ice, right, and right. it's all like overcast, but everything's the same color, gray. So it's like a lot of. Um, but then the storm hits, and then it just turns like eternal nighttime. Yeah, I was in love with that particular blue color that is everywhere. It's in the so movie, good, which is, effective and good. It's yeah, it's beautiful. It's the J.J. Abrams blue. I realized. Yeah, it's the I, uh, horizontal flares from uh, all the Abrams uh-huh. movies. I noticed yeah. that uh, oh, specifically. It was either it was either wit, uh, it was either um, kerosene dripping outside, or it might have been was it Benning's blood. Is Benning's the one that has the claw hand and they burn him? Yep, okay. Yeah, that's Benning's. Yeah. Uh, Benning's. So like, there's just like this drip, 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 and you have uh, it's like it just looks like black blood mm-hmm. against like the white uh, snowy backdrop, and then these glistening. It's glistening blue and red. Um, yeah, it's really pretty. Yeah, yeah. And then the yeah the kerosene itself is like this amber color. Uh, it's and- basically <laughs> cop car siren colors, which I wonder if there's an intentional like everyone gets paranoid when they see those colors mm-hmm. in the- and also like there's no <laughs> one com- there's no one coming for you there's nobody yeah. on the way <laughs> <laughs> he's really ahead of his time John Carpenter. well really yeah good. you could see uh when he's pissing in the snow he spells out a cab and they didn't mm-hmm. even have that <laughs> acronym back then yeah yeah it's kind of uh forward thinking mm-hmm. when you think about it yeah it's uh yeah, there's so much good craftsman work in this. I mean, obviously, the star of the show is the uh, uh, the body horse. Well, yeah. Sir Russell's the hat, I think. Yeah, his God, helicopter yeah, his, hat. His, cow, his cowboy his hat. His beard. The Arctic. Like, we get, we, get it. we get the character. We understand. <laughs> Come on. Uh, yeah, uh, this movie was not enjoyed the body horror stuff all the stuff that were like yeah this fucking slaps uh that was exactly why they hated mm-hmm. it they called him a pornographer of horror or a pornographer of violence well did the Sorry. fly tank um cronenberg's fly yeah i i thought that's a good question we did a fly episode. we did read not too long forgotten. ago and i gotta say i find that grosser than this Oh, it's way grosser because it dwells on it and such. Yeah. Um, but I wonder. Yeah, I want to. I want to find out that box office actually right now because that's that's a good m- movie to uh, mention. It'd be a good it's pairing. Only, yeah. It's like four years later. Uh, it. I think it actually did. It did very well. Yeah. That's what I thought. Got, so maybe yeah. maybe this was just just ahead of its time, or maybe this just loosened the pickle time, jar, maybe. and this movie made the fly possible. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe yeah, I feel like this was like it, the the immediate visceral reaction was like, "This is disgusting. I hate it." But then it opened mm. opened the door for like, "No, it's actually very good. <laughs> There's stuff going yeah. on. It's not just yeah, that. It's like a it's a thoughtful movie." Right, right. It's and it's four years before. Uh, or fl- the fly came out four years after uh, the thing. Um, also, just gotta so, say, one of the best yeah. movie posters ever. The thing, iconic movie poster. I love iconic, it. Iconic, yeah. Painted by the same guy who uh, Tom Jane is painting as in The Mist. <laughs> oh, do you oh, know yeah. what I mean? Tom Jane. It opens yeah. with him pretending to paint movie posters, <laughs> yeah. and they're movie posters by this guy. I think his name is Drew Struzan, and uh, he's mm-hmm. done some of the best movie posters ever. Uh, just oil painting, I think, yeah. or you know, hand painting with his hands. They don't. And, uh, yeah. I don't want to. The thing is, one of them. Be that they don't do this anymore, guy. But like, they really don't make <sighs> posters like this anymore. They really don't. They, they they Photoshop it to look like a painting, but you can tell. I want to see real painting. And just like the posters, simplicity yeah. of it, like I'm th- also thinking of like the alien poster. It's like it's just the the glowing egg. It's like that is such. Uh, an evocative poster, an image. You like want to mm-hmm. you want to know what that movie is instead of like, well, here's here are all the actors in the movie playing their characters. They're Dutch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> look at tilty. that. Look at that. <laughs> um, 
All right, well, now we're grinding our gears yeah. about <laughs> just, trends in movie posters. Right. Does that mean we're done? Just really good. I just wanted I mean, to shout out the... Please. Uh, no, more notes if you got stuff to say. I mean, I'm just going through all the scenes in my head, and uh, yeah. they keep pointing to, like, what we've been talking about this whole episode, but, like, just the the idea... Like, the uh, keep going back to the um, the isolation and paranoia requiring that you you isolate more even when that's not like yeah. a natural impulse mm-hmm. and the scene of uh the 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 spider head norris scene like they're mm-hmm. literally trying to save this guy's life they get it, it like once they realize they need to uh save him um mm-hmm. that's when everyone kicks into gear that's when crisis mode happens and what happens in crisis mode is that you come together they don't they're not thinking about the thing in that scene they're just thinking about how do we save norris and so they go mm. into the room together and uh, aside from mccready who i believe at that point still has like the dynamite like frozen to his body like holding mm-hmm. the thing yeah, but yeah. other than that uh they're like calling like, bring me bring me the paddles bring me the paddles and it's literally uh the guy holding the paddles f- uh, getting as close to the man as possible to save his life, but the thing opens up the chest and grabs him. Um, it's yeah. it, it punishes it's, you for trying to help each it, other. Exactly. Yeah. It's very. It's just. It's. It's such a good scene. Yeah, and I also like as a kind of echo of the same thing where they're doing, rather than the result, but rather the motivation for like a further scene and later scenes, like the testing the blood sequence is so ordered and you like authoritarian and only one of them is oh, yeah. the thing because i thought in the blood test sequence there would be three or four things you know <laughs> yeah 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 and i i just love that i think it's mccready says something like all right and when he tests himself now i'm gonna let you all know what i've i i already know which is that he's not mm. a thing um but like the way that carpenter shoots that the fact that like of course it's got to be one of the guys who's tied to the couch you right, know right. like that's the perfect answer because now you have another kind of couch it's such a good line you know you also remind <laughs> me um since it is nebulous i believe you can choose whatever you want i choose to believe that kurt russell is the thing in the final scene just because they had that's the one twist they didn't deploy yet so i want that that's to be, the other yeah. one yeah <laughs> i do i do think i do think one of them is the thing um and but one is I, not one and one is not um i could go either way because that would be very satisfying yeah um, but there are there are a few things even earlier where i'm like mm, i'm pretty sure child's just got turned into the thing that's why i do like the futurama body uh shape-shifting monster episode because in 22 minutes, they mathematically do every possible permutation of this twist. It's a riff that combines all these stories mm-hmm, into mm-hmm. one, where it's like like Fry going, oh, I know what's going on here. I'm the monster. <laughs> right, right, exactly. right. Well, that speaks, that speaks to that, uh, that fear, too, where it's like, I don't even know if I am. Yeah. The imitation is so right. perfect that the imitation thinks that it's real. Would I know I that think I'm that's my imitation. favorite idea that's come out of this episode. Yeah, that's so cool. I feel like... If it copied the structure of their brain, and the mo- at the moment the final molecule clicked into place, that brain would have all the memories of the original mm-hmm. and not know it's a thing. Exactly. Until it, it's like, oh, wait, gross. I'm gross now. I'm the thing. <laughs> yeah, well, better thing it up. Mm-hmm. It's a living. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, Childs basically says the reverse in the movie, because he says, uh, so how would we know who's human? If I was an imitation, a perfect imitation, how would I? Kn- how would you know if it was really me? And you guys are saying like, how would it know it's him? It, like, how would an imitation know? Um, yeah, I think I think you have to because of how Blair uh, right acts this, at this the spaceship end. Uh, kind know of know that, that away. It, everything knows it's a thing. Um, or it could like it could, it could just, like grow into your nervous system and decide when to activate because the only thing is I feel like Palmer doesn't right. know he's a thing for a while and then he suddenly does it seems like but I could but yeah it seems like but it could just be great performing the thing know, is a perfect actor quote unquote a good yeah. actor yeah 
uh, there's a lot of stuff that they yada yada, like all the memories, you know, like all that kind of stuff. You just have to kind of take for granted because it's magic. Because it's right. Like, horror, can you test by you asking know, personal fantasy. questions, or does the thing know everything you know? You know, down to right. Because right. also, that, yeah, if it's right. imitating it and ha- it, they're able to communicate, which means they understand like Langu- language, yeah. which is, and they instantly have mm-hmm. are able to like talk as though they are that. So, like, how deep does that go? Especially because at the same time, it seems like it takes them hours to, or it has to fuck around. It's like, is this a hand or a claw? I'll get there. Just give me some time and I'll look like a human. And it's like, yet Palmer is fully formed and can like joining in the conversation. So I wonder what the gestation rules are, but I'm sure there aren't set rules. That's the point. Right, right. Exactly. <laughs> I'm sure there yeah. aren't. It's, it's a formless we monster blanks, with formless we, rules. Cause which we want it. We want it to succeed. Yeah. Um, it's crazy how much because like Blade Runner had a very similar kind of like we have the whole test and the whole concept of like we need to know if you the alien are like us Mm -hmm. like what is intelligence what is you know like what's what is the magic sauce that makes uh, humans humans what is different between others and that yeah and it's always something like that it's always it's it's that ineffable love love Mm -hmm. stuff or something like that or it's just like I just wouldn't do that because I'm not a machine Uh, this is this is of course a lot more antagonizing because from the get go it's like I must absorb you but uh, we were fascinated in this era so much about and I think we're going to I uh, honestly, based off what's happening and what Cody was saying, which I think he's spot on about, I think we're going to have another era in movies where it, you know, the, the game of it can be anybody is going to resurface like that horror doesn't go away. It just comes well, back especially now because it's so apropos of having recently lived through a pandemic piece, some, the odds yep. are high that some budding filmmaker right now is having the thought, oh, you know what's brilliant? Like a shapeshifter. The, and it reflects the paranoia right. of a pandemic. Right. And you're like, that's right. true. That is a good and time also, for a movie yes, like that. Yes, you should make the <laughs> yeah. thing again. But you know and what sucks that we're think... out of titles? We've already, I was trying to think of a new title in my head for what, but we've got The Thing, The Stuff, It, and Them are all movies already. <laughs> The formless, yeah, they, the shape, they live. The shape, maybe the shape. Yeah, the shape, the blob. The blob exists. <laughs> right. The blob exists. I think the shape is the name of a horror monster in something. That makes sense. That's a, good, That's a yeah, cool yeah, name. Form. The form, yeah, the form, the formless, yeah. the uh, <clears throat> the shadow. But it's like, but it's and just I think the movie. The, the shadow. shadow knows. I think if it, oh I yeah, Michael Myers from... is called the shape. Oh, yeah. he is. Really? Yep, they call him the shape. He's not called Halloween. Uh, <laughs> Halloween boy. <laughs> it's the Halloween monster boy. <laughs> Get out of here. It's the Halloween. Uh, <laughs> no, I think a lot of these, because if you watch Invasion of the Body Snatchers, like 50s to 60s and 60s wasn't, there wasn't a ton of this type of horror, but there, there, it was all Buck Rogers sci-fi kind of stuff. Um, so everything was like, bright and great um racist there's something you see about these trend these trends um where like we had the red scare and then we had like a good decade to like cool off from that Mm -hmm. and then and then in like the eight 70s and 80s 70s got us like slasher flicks you know uh and in the 80s we had like another horror revival and it is like a gritty form of horror. We got the introduction of like sci-fi in an interesting way because sci-fi wasn't sci-fi was a little bit more about the xenophobic fear of aliens, Mm -hmm. which is, I think another, it's that same it's because I think there, what we had going on was like the cold war. It's the idea. And we're going to have another one now, I think because the only difference between humans really that we're trying that we're seeing right now is like some of you believe this bullshit (laughs) and some of you believe something else and the only difference that you can really because of how split we are the only you have to like talk to them and figure out what's going on in their mind before you can really say like well what are you human um and i think that there's something to be said about like the shapeshifter 
like the reason shapeshifters are terrifying because they are like we're saying formless and you can't know if a thing is the, an imitation is an imitation until you do like a test on it and if uh i want to see a horror movie where there is no way to test mm. it yeah. what does that do yeah. <laughs> that probably fucks everything because then it's just like well nothing matters because we're all fucked because we know there is a thing but we can't even yeah test i mean it, that's gonna you know, that would yeah more probably more quickly lead to the conclusion that they come to at the end right where it's like well it's it's right. it's not us or it it's all of us it's got to be all of us in order to make sure that it is destroyed it is destroyed yeah but that's an interesting and, you know, thought experiment what about an alien parasite that takes you over but it doesn't it acts exactly like you and everything's the same and it spreads quickly and it everything is exactly like has humanity been extinguished if from an outside observer's perspective everything is continuing exactly as normal there's just different consciousnesses inside the things that are doing right because if it's an exact <laughs> replica it's going to have the same memories which means it's going to react to its environment in the same way too so like all yeah. of the things that it does right. are going to be the things that you would probably do it's just not you anymore but you also don't know that it's not you anymore because it's perfectly imitating what you are so I love it so in other words, watch uh, FX is dead. I was going to say, in other words, <laughs> yeah, play uh, you're in Dave's Wilford Brimley game. <laughs> I was going to say perform the you? experiment from Dark City until you can scientifically determine what makes humans humans. All Which, by the way, I think options. in that movie, it's also love, I think. I think it's that he loves that one lady. It's <laughs> love. Yeah, love. love. It's the I, bet, I bet the thing loves... I bet it has some uh, some I bet it variety fucks. of love. Oh, it definitely fucks. See, it's got like a dick stock. That I want to see the castaway like, version of the thing where you're with the Helen Hunt thing at home and he is a brave spacefaring thing husband and and like she gets on with her life and then he returns and is like do you know how many arctic scientists i had to kill to get back to you mm. and there, she's like there's... i don't even recognize you anymore and he's like that's the point i've absorbed like seven thousand things we Jesus are things Christ. that is we're what we do things. <laughs> we're all I things you honey. Anymore. you're not supposed to <laughs> Maybe absorb someone who will listen for once. <laughs> I'm slurping out of here. It's like I love because like, I feel like we've talked before about how like yeah like with Star Wars movies do like do like a a noir Star Wars Bedroom do a drama. romantic comedy it's Star Wars do like get. all the things. Um, but doing that in the Thing universe is would be very very funny. A Kramer versus Kramer in the Thing <laughs> exactly. universe. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a romantic comedy would also be good. How'd you know they? Like how'd you how? know they weren't a sentient species? Uh, he uh, knocked a bottle of booze into a computer right away. It was obvious. Yeah, I was like, no, it was obvious. <laughs> guys, an idiot. These guys Who would ruin their one game? We it's don't the even one need game them. It's the only game. It's the only way to it's pass the, the one time. Game they had. I ate them all. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, I absorbed yeah. them with my eyes. Oh, socks. I almost forgot, Cody. Who should I vote for? Yeah, whoever you want, dog. Okay, great. Um, but yeah, tell people about your other show. Oh your yeah, vastly more popular <laughs> show that doesn't need a plug. Um, uh, it's a show. Uh, I appreciate that. We call it. What do we call it? We have a YouTube show called Some More News and a podcast called Even More News and another podcast called Worst Year Ever. You can check us out on patreoncom slash some more more slash some more news for that. Google us. We talk about uh, more depressing things than movies that are a joy to talk about. Mm. Um, uh, it, but also, don't vote for the uh, monster, please. <laughs> Oh, so now suddenly there's rules. Look, 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 look. You just said, whoever I want, <laughs> dog. I am quoting. Per personally, dog. Uh, not a fan of uh, the cruel, the cruel, the cruel guy, the cruelest of the of the of the guys. The yeah. cruelest boy. But you know, but you know, whoever yep. you want, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. I don't I care. Don't, I, don't don't even even for. I don't care. It's actually really important, but I don't care. I but it's usually but monumental. Like, but like, please important. make sure to vote. But like, don't vote if you don't want to. But also, please <laughs> vote. It's very important. Do vote, but also I'm comedically detached. But still vote. 
Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's, <laughs> I think it's the, that's pretty, yeah. pretty accurate. Yeah. 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 They're good shoties. Um, how is Robert? Have you talked with him recently? Um, yeah. He got injured, right? Uh, he did get injured. Um, a, uh, a fascist street thug uh, broke his hand. Jesus Christ. Um, I think yep. his, his finger. Um, but yeah, uh, fucked up his hand. Uh, it's he part is, of the hand. It's part of the hand. Um, he is, uh, you know, you know, um, he... He's a, a real, real he's a real journalist. journalist. He's uh, a real he's one. Doing, he's doing yeah. he's doing real work, um, and uh, he's trying to take care of his team. Uh, things are getting worse out there, um, and he is, you know, I'm just gonna put uh, the word "fine" in quotes. I guess, right? That's how we're all sure. doing, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It was hilarious because we. I don't know if it's hilarious, but <laughs> we were uh, we were asked by one of our other picks, the flicks, uh, a while ago. They wanted. Uh, Robert Evans to be uh, one of the guests on our show and it literally happened like I emailed him literally like the day of like the Portland stuff really kicking uh, up yeah you yeah. know and I and he and he he was very nice about it he emailed me back and he was like I do I'm not gonna do that there's <laughs> there's a lot of shit going on and I'm like I figured <laughs> right, this right. email was I'm poorly so timed <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh yeah but i mean he understood and all but it's just a really it's uh, from my perspective a very hilarious thing to come out of a very yeah, horrible yeah. thing just well, like this yeah, is wanna, voice wanna, on this wanna, network i have a feeling he's not going to be doing entertainment focused podcasts for a little while it'll be a while <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah he'll probably want to at some Lost point theme, yeah. He's, yeah and he's we do poker. um we do every once in a while for his behind the bastards show we just read uh chapters from ben shapiro's terrible novel oh yeah um and Jesus. so that is uh like not this last time we recorded one but the time before he's like oh yeah this is like the first time i've laughed in weeks uh to just like that's i think that's his version of like just talk about a funny thing it's like it's wild because it's like not there are no scenes basically it's just like him like doing spark notes for another book he read but it's very long Mm -hmm. it's bad bad shapiro well this is a frame rate so we rate frames we don't rate tools so that's true we although just talked about a good movie. ben shapiro i love yeah. to launch new podcasts on this network tool talk it's coming tool, tool right talk. tool time uh what tool real great uh yeah we're also <laughs> a thing and we, we require sustenance and you can sustain us over at patreon.com slash small beans which will also unlock uh, various benefits depending on the tier including uh, bonus podcast episodes the ability to determine the course of several of our podcasts including I'll show you mine if you show me yours and uh, frame rate although that's on hiatus <laughs> one upsmanship although it's been a long time since anyone did that frankly Amish shout out I remember playing Destiny that dude quite well um, or give us a five star review over at the iTunes podcasting mm-hmm. yeah it- absorb us absorb us mm-hmm. yep Assimilate. Until then. Assimilate me, Daddy. Assimilate, isolate, <laughs> rate five stars. Rate like five and subscribe. We are you? <laughs> This has been a Small Beans Endeavor. We're a bunch of pals who make podcasts, sketches, music, web series, and movies. The Beans always have new ideas percolating, so make sure to check us out at patreon.com slash smallbeans. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash smallbeans, where you can browse all of our current and past content, see what we've got planned in the future, and learn how your support can help the Small Beans grow into huge, giant monster beans. If you enjoyed this content module, please like, rate, subscribe, or tell a friend about us. We love you!